Next is heparin. Heparin is an anticoagulant. Now it is made up of sulfated disaccharide. Mind well, it is disaccharide, not polypeptide. Two forms of heparin are available high molecular weight heparin and low molecular weight heparin. Now let's look at its mechanism of action. This is high molecular weight heparin. Look how large it is. High molecular weight heparin provides a good bed for antithrombin 3. So antithrombin 3, this molecule is antithrombin 3. Look how nicely it is sleeping on high molecular weight heparin. It sleeps nicely on high molecular weight heparin and inactivates factor 10 and 2. 2 is also called thrombin. Whereas low molecular weight heparin only provides pillow to antithrombin 3. So this antithrombin 3 could only inactivate factor 10. It cannot inactivate thrombin. Now this high molecular weight heparin is highly protein bound. Therefore it has less predictable action and therefore need to be monitored. Whereas low molecular weight heparin is less protein bound. It has more predictable action. Therefore no need to be monitoring. Also antidote of heparin is protamine sulfate. It is safe in pregnancy because it cannot cross the placental barrier. Also it releases lipoprotein lipase. Now once the lipoprotein lipase is released, it clears the plasma from triglyceride. It makes the plasma clear. All are true about heparin except it is sulfated disaccharide not polypeptide. Compared to high molecular weight, low molecular weight is less protein bound. Hence it has predictable action and need not to be monitored. Drug use in heparin overdose is protamine. All the following statement about heparin are true except Look, it causes alopecia, it's the side effect, rare alopecia. It is non-teratogenic, it releases lipoprotein ripase, but there are no evidence of hyperkalemia in heparin. Let's move to antiplatelet drugs. Let's suppose you have two platelets. Now these platelets want to aggregate with each other in order to stop bleeding. Now how it is done? ADP stimulates two platelet to aggregate. ADP. Now if you want no aggregation of platelet you need to give some drugs which blocks this ADP to bind with platelet. These are Ticlopidin and Clopidogrel. Ticlopidin is also a prodrug. Next are the glycoprotein 2B3A receptors. This allows fibrinogen to bind with them and fibrinogen bumps two platelets together so there is platelet aggregation. So the another modality of uh, approach is the blockage of glycoprotein 2b3a receptor by epsisimab terafiban or eptifiban right this is a monoclonal antibody you block glycoprotein 2b3a receptors also thromboxin a2 allows platelet aggregation which is found from arachidonic acid via cyclooxygenase now which drug is irreversible inhibitor of cyclooxygenase the famous one it's the aspirin right so these are the antiplatelet drugs so which antiplatelet drug is pro drug is ticlopidin the adp inhibitor adp receptor inhibitor and all of these are gp2b3a receptor inhibitor except clopidogrel which is adp receptor inhibitor 